All right, what's up guys? It's Sam. We're working on the black card today. I've been collecting parts, which I wish I could have showed you guys, but I've got a ton of black interior stuff upstairs that I'll get pretty soon and install that. Uh, but today we are doing the top hats on the struts. Because my upper control arm is like this, and my strut is with the airbags is like this, and it's a pancake style. It's been rubbing right over here. And it didn't rub with the stock arms because airlift is a bolt on kit, so it's meant to work with the stock arms. But I had upgraded to ZSS racing control arms that I picked up in Japan, and uh, they're better for going low, not like the stock arms that just get torn up really fast. Um, so when my stock arms went bad, I upgraded to those and I didn't know that they would rub because I had tested all the different um, heights by using the jack to lift up and lower the whole hub which in turn moved the um, upper control arm and it didn't rub. It was pretty close at some points but it didn't ever rub. I could fit my pinky through so I don't know why it's been rubbing but it has. <laughs> I ordered the airbags and they came in within like three days honestly it was awesome airlift um customer support was awesome talked to them and they hooked me up with it and i bought it right there and they sent it in like three business days which is awesome um but if i replace the bags it's still going to rub so basically i need to bring the strut more in and the pancakes will go an inch more in without adjusting my camber or ride height uh, or anything like that caster uh, to do this it's a top hat so I had to go uh, and get it from T demand and it took a while because there is miscommunication between the dealer and uh, the T demand shops the pro shops so it took about a month for me to get it uh, came straight from Japan and I'll unbox it for you guys and then we'll install it and I'll show you where it goes. It basically replaces the airlift um, top hat and then it's adjustable. I think uh, other cars have it in terms of like camber plates and stuff like that and then it'll move the strut inwards and I'll probably get an alignment after that just to be safe anyways. Uh, so let's get started.
of crazy. So we'll be fixing that today. It doesn't feel too much like softer. Pretty good actually, I guess. Huh. Well, definitely couldn't run that for too much longer. So this is the part that we'll be replacing. And it's gonna be fully adjustable, you'll see. Uh, I'm gonna get the other side out, it's basically the same thing. And uh, yeah, then we'll switch it out. We gotta take these bags off and then put the top hat on and that's it. Okay, and here's the unboxing for the replacement airbags for an airlift strut. Okay guys, ended up getting it off. Uh, here you can see this is the top hat itself. The bottom, not adjustable at all. But that's how it's supposed to be. Um, but anyways, you just have to undo this nut at the top. And then it'll come off like this. Then all you're gonna have to do is unscrew this bag from this part of the strut. It's got the threads right over here and it continues inside. Uh, we can take a look at the bag. I don't know if you guys saw from my other shots, but this is the replacement and it has all this threading on the inside. So all you have to do is basically undo that. Uh, I found to take the nut off the top works best with a gun. It actually doesn't need to be a strong gun of any sort. So you just have to hold the threads though, don't hold this because it'll end up spinning it off. And then you have to count threads, which I have to do anyways because I'm going to adjust it. Um, or measure, whatever you do. So you're going to hold this thread part. And voila! I tried to use the uh, breaker bar, but it kept spinning this instead, and it was hard to hold this, but um, it's way easier with a gun, so if you have one, definitely use it. If you only have a drill or something, you can buy uh, these guys. I'll try to leave a link if I can, or if I remember. Uh, it's little adapters, so you have it for this uh, one key, the chuck, and that way it just snaps in real easy. This is a half inch as you can see. I have a three quarters and a quarter inch. It makes life super easy. It's not super strong, so you're not gonna go breaking all the bolts in the world, uh, which would be nice, uh, but you know, it's good for interior pieces or pieces with lower torque loads and uh, stuff you've already broken maybe, like even wheel lugs, you just break those and then you just zap them all off. It's really convenient. Um, and then even something like this, if you buy this one, you can end up putting it into a regular drill with that um, style chuck that you tighten uh, because it's got the like hexagon type style. So I definitely pick some of these up. Uh, I'll leave a link for you guys. You can go check that out. And uh, and then I just used a 17 mil for mine, and then it came off just like that, real easy. And it literally just pops off faster. It's good to use a gun because right over here you can see that they used red Loctite. So that's why it's kind of hard to come off. I mean, you wouldn't want it to just pop off while you're driving. So, makes sense. And same like the other one, we'll just have to unthread it. Okay guys, it is the next day. Um, wasn't actually able to finish. I couldn't get the the bellow, this top part, off of this bottom strut part, uh, the threaded part, it was just threaded on way too tight, so I couldn't do it myself. 
and I didn't want to force anything, so I figured I'd wait. I'd wait and call Airlift and uh, see if they have any suggestions on how to do it or how they do it. So I called and this morning I had to wake up at like uh, 4, 4 a.m. so that I didn't have to wait forever and I could get a quick answer because uh, they're on Eastern Time and I'm on Pacific Time so it's kind of terrible actually but um, for any of you guys with a GS or any struts similar to this which has the bag on the top and then just the strut itself it's really simple really clean really nice the only thing is you can't even stick a screwdriver through here because if you try to loosen it which means you would have to stick it through and wrench it this way and you hold this down somehow it actually ends up loosening this black sleeve I've seen one guy he put a screwdriver through part of his but he has a different sleeve type thing on the bottom so I don't know it doesn't loosen itself like mine does uh, so if you have one similar to mine and it's not working out for you what you need to do is you need to get uh, like a oil filter clamp the biggest one preferably barely though it'll fit around this top part like that right and then you will just pull what I did was I pulled it up and then uh, I use this this rag you can see Let's see how the marks from the threads I use that to wrap around this I just fold it in half and then wrapped it around once and then I tighten the vise around it and you actually have to tighten it pretty tight uh, it's kind of sketchy but uh, there's no warping or anything like that or even damage to the threads uh, just over here on this one you got some some cloth stuck inside but that's nothing you know so that was great <coughs> uh, also ends up you know I just gradually did it uh, I'd try to wrench it and pull it up and if it spun in the vise then I just tightened the vise a little bit more did it again tightened it until um, I thought it was too much but it was actually not too much it was perfect and I recommend doing kind of more so jerking up motions and it'll probably slide like this out of the vise so just hold this top part down like that with your palm or something like that or over here and fast quick um, upwards pulls that way it, it breaks it rather than just slowly torquing and spinning it uh, and yeah that way you don't have to put as much pressure um, clamping the threads down but none of the threads are warped or anything so that's awesome and now I'm just going to replace the bag put on the new top hats and that's about it uh, they do have this seal in it uh, and a lot of grease so should be good I shouldn't have to put any more they did put red Loctite though which is why it was so hard to come off in the first place uh, at the end when we put everything together we'll keep it off the car uh, and then do a uh, leak test with soapy water and we'll see if anything bubbles and then we can fix the leak from there um, but yeah so that's it uh, and I'll put it back together now and come back to you guys when I finish that cool. finally finished got these beauties on I just have to match the threads and then we can go ahead and put it on the car the threads are matched like how much is in 
side of the bag itself and thread it in there, but then these just got, you know, messed up. I was trying to take it off, so I'll just uh, match that and actually raise the car a bit. So hopefully it's not resting on the upper control arms or a lot less. Put together strut. With the Tiedemann top hats and brand new Bello style bag. Looks looks good. Looks really nice. There you go. Okay guys, <clears throat> this is pretty awesome. Just got it back in. Uh, nothing's really buttoned up or anything, but I got the bottom eye bolt on, so that's fixed in place, uh, not torqued down. But I also have the top three just holding it in. Basically, I didn't want it to rub, so now I have a ton of clearance. Here's the very top of its motion, which it'll be going to before I get a shortened knuckle. Of course, not touching here. Not touching at all. Huge amount of space. And then I drop it down even lower. And yet again, a lot of space. Over here, it will touch, but the thing is, it's never gonna go this low. So it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> if it's going that low, that means like something is yanking all of this way far below its you know, operating range because even the old bags never had a scuff or scratch on the bottom bellow. It only had it on the top. So this, this will work, I think. <laughs> okay guys, here we are. Finally finished. This is the lowest it'll go actually. So that leaves me with still, you know, a lot of clearance between the lower bag and the upper control arm. Yeah, you can see this cardboard over here because it's a little bit big. I should have cut it smaller. Um, but that's just basically so there's no metal to metal contact. And I can maybe save the finish, you know, and prevent like scraping and therefore preventing rust. But that's what it looks like. So you can actually um, adjust it within here uh, if you had moved the uh, hex keys in more but I have the most amount of clearance so I'm just maxing it out <laughs> and I'm gonna leave it so there's no need for me to adjust it and then here's the other side same thing looks good we'll just put this one on the ground and see how it looks <laughs> okay guys there you have it um, we're done we finished it works beautifully now you can kind of see it in there it's really hard to uh, also, same height on the lip above the ground as it was before, so that means uh, that it's still on the upper control arm, so I'd still have to raise it up a little bit until I get the knuckle. But I can drive it now, and it'll be the same as before, so that's good. Uh, I plan on driving it tomorrow, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Torqued everything down, so hopefully nothing blows up. Uh, <laughs> coming along guys and uh, I got a bunch of interior stuff like I said for the um, dash and whatnot except for the carpet but other than that we'll start putting it in and I'll keep you guys updated as we do that and I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe learned something found it entertaining till the next time see you